In today's episode, we are back working on the port, and we're gonna take this area and turn it into a dry docks. Welcome back in, my beautiful builders. It has been a while since we worked on the port section of this world, so I am excited to be back working on this area. But what we're gonna be working on today is a dry docks. And if you're not familiar with what that is, a dry docks is an area for boats to be built or repaired. And I figured we have a pretty cool little jut out here at the end of the port, right next to all the other ships. This could be a great place to put in a dry docks. So I went ahead and cut a section out of the port and put a ramp coming out of the water. So for this dry dock to make sense, I think you're gonna have to play a little bit of pretend with me. So let's say that we have a ship that is coming into port that needs to be repaired. Something was damaged or it was attacked by pirates, something like that, and this ship needs to come to the dry docks. What would happen is this ship is going to ram itself right onto the edge of the dry dock itself. Then I'm playing pretend with these slabs. These slabs are basically big cylinder poles. They are a way for the ship to run up against it and then it can roll itself into the dry dock. What we'll probably do is add some type of crane here at the end that we can attach to the front of a ship and just pull it along those poles into the dry dock area for the workers to repair it. Like I said, you gotta play a little bit of pretend, but I think it works. So I think I'll worry about getting the cranes and pulleys and such in a little bit later. For right now, I wanna go ahead and get in the main building. So this dry docks building is gonna end up being pretty tall, and that's because a lot of ships have masts that are gonna need to be repaired at some point. And in order to get up really high, they're gonna have to have a building that also reaches up pretty high. So for this build, this is my basic idea. Over on the right side, we're going to have our main building. This is gonna be a warehouse of sorts that will hold raw materials such as wood, uh, sails, things like that, that can be used in repairs or building of the ship. Over to the left side, however, is going to be a tower. And basically this tower is going to serve one purpose, and that is to add support to the bridge that's going to connect the two sides. Like I said, these workers are gonna have to reach very high up on the mast. So if they have a bridge that is pretty high above the actual dry dock itself, they should be able to work on the mast with relative ease. This is actually one of my favorite blocks in the game because I just love the color of Dark Prismarine. And I think that the reason that I like the color of Dark Prismarine so much is it reminds me of Lincoln Logs, which is a toy that I used to play with when I was a kid where we could build houses and such like that out of these little blocks. And it was actually a really fun toy growing up, something that I guess kind of inspired my creativity early on in life. You know, maybe that should be my answer from now on when people ask me how to become a better builder in Minecraft. Listen, kid, you gotta get yourself a set of Lincoln Logs, okay? I feel like I sounded a little bit like Mick from Rocky Balboa there. <laughs> Listen, Rocky, you gotta learn how to get hit and keep on coming. Nothing's gonna hit you harder than life. All right, well, that roof is looking really cool. Definitely love the dark prismarine. I'll probably end up cutting some type of hole into the side of this roof at some point to add a crane coming out over the dry docks. I feel like that could be useful for lifting up any type of logs or something that are gonna be needed for the mast. And I'm doing my best to try and make this build at least somewhat realistic. Obviously, there's only so much that I can do inside of Minecraft, but I feel like a bridge like this, some type of catwalk, definitely makes sense. And having something make sense and having something look good don't always correlate. But in this case, I think this is coming out pretty good so far. I mean, it's not, it's not my greatest build, but it's got potential. I don't know. I kind of like it. I think it's kind of cute so far. Definitely uh, still a little bit drafty though. Let's get some walls in. And I think for these walls, I'm going to once again turn to my good old trusty calcite. You know, it is funny. Whenever this block first released, I thought that it was going to be one of my least favorite blocks in the game. And turns out I use this stuff a lot. I really like it. 
I think that it's just such a very neutral color block, and when you mix in diorite with it, it actually turns out to be a pretty good looking pattern. Alrighty, so our walls are now in, and this thing is coming together pretty good so far. It's very, very bland right now because it has no windows or detailing or anything like that, but as far as the structure, as far as the shape, I think that this is coming out pretty good. Let's get some windows in, let's get some detailing with trap doors and such like that, and I think this build is going to be a winner. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm struggling a little bit here with this build. Because while I think this is coming out looking pretty good, this is also an industrial build, so I don't want it to look too cute. I'm trying to find a good balance between cute to where it looks good in the port and also very industrial, like work is actually being done in this area. And hitting that balance has actually become a lot more challenging because adding bushes and stuff just raises the cute level, but that's not exactly what I want. I'm not really sure what to do. I mean, I have to have a way to detail out these builds and flowers, bushes, that's kind of been my go-to. So for instance, let's take the gatehouse and this storage building as an example. Both of these still look very industrial, even though they have bushes and flowers added to the buildings. I'm trying to get the same vibe for this building, and I feel like I'm failing thus far. Honestly, I may just leave this one up to the comments section because I'm stumped. Do you guys have any ideas to make this area feel a little bit more industrial? That's basically what I'm going for. The flowery prettiness is fine, but I have to have a way to do it so that it still looks like this is a work area. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get some of the texturing done for this build. Get rid of some of this calcite and break it up with some diorite. That'll add a little bit more grittiness to the build, I know. Then we'll go ahead and add in some of our extra elements, such as a crank here to help pull the boats out of the water. And I'll probably try to get in at least one more crane, probably on that side, because we have a little bit more room over there. I already added one crane coming out of the window up here, which I think looks pretty cool, but we definitely need another. You know, I was a little bit worried about this build, but now that I have some of the texturing in with the diorite, this is looking a lot more industrial, and I like it. It's got kind of that grungy factor that I was going for, and I think that this is turning out to be a really, really nice, cool build. All right, I'm not nearly as worried about it as I was. The next thing that I wanna get in is a crank, though. So, unlike a crane, which is going to be lifting things up, I want to make a crank style crane, I guess. And this is going to be to pull things out from the water. So we're gonna have some big wheels on each side, and then a person can stand up here, grab onto a handle, and then crank that boat out from the harbor and into the dry docks. But I'm missing a couple of things that I'm really gonna need for the crank, such as some iron bars and some lightning rods. All right, so this crank design is actually pretty simple because it's not a very large build by any means. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take some spruce slabs, put them just like that, and then I'm gonna need some stairs. And to do this properly, I'll have to put another slab up there so that I can get these upside down, and then we'll just replace it just like that. And that's the bottom part of our circle. For the top part, we're going to get up here, place a trap door like that, trap door like that, and that is the sides of our circle. And now I just need a little bit of buildy buildy up stuff. <laughs> the scaffolding will work perfectly. And what I'm gonna do is put a stair on top of this trap door like this, and then a, oh, I missed. <laughs> I need to, put a, need to put a stair on top of this trap door. Uh, like that, perfect. And then just a slab in between to connect them up. And now we have ourselves a circle in Minecraft. <laughs> Perfect. So now all I want to do is get uh, some cobblestone and we'll just put it right in the center. And that is our wheel. Go ahead and put a lightning rod on top of there so that you have a handle for somebody to grab onto and crank with. And that's the basics of this build. Let's go ahead and get the same thing on the other side. All right, so there we go. That is the first portion of the crane. Now we need to have the actual 
lever portion that goes out into the dry dock itself. And I think for this, I'm just going to use some half slabs and we're going to kind of go up at an angle like this, probably break out, uh, actually we're on a full block there. So maybe like, maybe like this and then break that block out so that we're kind of at a diagonal and then bring this up just a little bit. I think that that could work. Let's go ahead and try with some iron bars because I want these to connect up nice and perfect. So something a bit like that and then iron bar, iron bar, iron bar. And then we just need to come over the edge with this. So I'm gonna need some more scaffolding and just like that. And then one down and then I want a chain just at the end hanging down like that. And that should be a pretty good looking crank. <laughs> nice, you can definitely tell that this is like a, like a little hook or something that you can hook to the front of a boat and pull it in. I like that, I think that came out looking really good. Now I do think that we need one much larger crane over here in this area. And the reason I say that is how are we going to get massive logs off of a ship and onto this port. How are we going to offload things like this into this area so we can build ships? So I think that a massive crane to get raw materials off of a ship is going to be super, super useful. And another reason you may need a very large crane in this area is if you have a ship that's damaged but is also holding a ton of goods, you're gonna need to offload those goods before you're able to get the ship pulled into the dry dock. If you have all of that heavy weight, it's gonna be much harder to bring the ship in. So having a crane with a basket or something to where you can load all of those items onto a basket and then have the crane just drop the items over here that would be a very good use of this crane. So much larger crane, definitely needed. And I really like this circular design that we did for the crank here. So let's do something similar. Bigger, but similar. But for a large crane like this, we're gonna need some kind of counterweight. And I think I have a pretty good idea for that. So here we are, two big counterweights attached to the back of these wheels. So as these wheels roll up, the counterweights go up. As the wheels roll out, then the counterweights are going to go down. However, sometimes accidents happen and these counterweights will slam down into the port. And as you can see, that has wore the port out over time and it is very broken up. If we head up to the top of the crane, I've also added in a very small control area. So somebody would be sitting right here in this seat and then flick, flick the levers to, to control the things. It kind of messes with the trap doors, but that's okay. This is basically the bucket area for someone to sit. And honestly, I really like how this crane turned out. I think it is a really, really cool design. So this build has a lot of elements going for it at this point. It has the crank, it has the smaller crane, it has the really large crane out over the harbor, but there's still one last element that I want to add to this build, and that's gonna be a partially built ship right here in the dry dock. I think that's gonna add the last little element that we need. So at this point, I just started building a ship and I tried to keep this design very, very simple. And that's because this ship is supposed to be under construction. So no sails in yet, no nice trimming that makes it look all fancy. It's just the hull and a mast. This ship still has work to do on it. And that's the goal that we were going for. We want this thing to look partially complete. So for this ship, I went with oak as the primary color. And the reason is I wanted this ship to feel new. Whereas all of these ships that have been out at sea and have gotten wet over time and worn, that's kind of your spruce color. And this is the color that I would imagine most ships to be. However, a brand new ship that is freshly under construction, I'm thinking would look more like oak. It would be that fresh wood color that hasn't been worn down by the weather yet. And overall, I think that this build came out looking pretty good. It has quite a lot of elements going for it, a lot of different features of the build, but I don't think that's a bad thing. It's a little busy, but I think that since this is a work area, 
work areas are supposed to feel busy. So the crank, the ship, the big crane out front, the crane coming out of the window, all of this, I feel, adds to the entire environment for this area. And I think that it came out looking pretty good. I still probably need to add some type of landscaping around here, maybe some smaller flowers, maybe even just green grass, something like that. Maybe some baskets for the crane to hold just sat out here somewhere. But overall, the main building is done and I really couldn't be happier with it. I think that this come out really, really cool. But there is one last thing that I want to do in today's episode. As you can see, I only have seven rockets left to my name, and that's not good. I like being able to fly around my world and at least take looks around every now and then. So while I prefer walking around a good bit, flying just gives you a completely different perspective. So at the end of today's episode, I want to make a general mob farm and I'm gonna do that way out here in the ocean on a little island if I can find the island again is this it yeah this is it <laughs> already got all the materials and everything set up here so without further ado it's time lapse time so I started building this general mob farm and honestly this thing's probably a little bit overkill for what we need but I followed a tutorial by gamer Corey and made this 12 story behemoth of a mob farm for my little single player world. I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below to Gamer Corey's video if you wanna follow along with him, as well as I believe the original design for this farm is actually by Nimbomb, and Gamer Corey just updated it for 1.18. So I'll try to leave a link to both of them in the description down below. Goodness gracious, that's from like AFK for like two minutes. We're gonna get absolutely plenty of gunpowder from this thing. And you know, I'm pretty okay with having a super overpowered mob farm because that means when I need materials like gunpowder, I don't have to AFK as much. I can just come over here for a few minutes and get plenty of gunpowder for rockets and such. So I'm pretty happy with this. Got myself a little AFK platform up top here and just sit in here. No phantoms can get me because of the glass blocks and I'm good to go. So very quickly, let me talk you through how this farm works. This note block is our trigger and this trigger is going to fire whenever this etho hopper clock runs out of blocks. I have 32 cobblestone slabs going back and forth between these hoppers. Whenever one of them empties, the pistons update and this redstone block moves back and forth. That's what is powering this repeater that is powering that note block. Whenever that note block gets a sound, whenever that note block updates, all we have is a observer underneath and that observer is looking down into a dispenser down below. So you can see it's, it's pretty dark. Hold on, let me sleep. You know, I just realized even though I slept, it's still gonna be dark in here because uh, <laughs> it's light level zero. It's light level zero all inside of here. So it really doesn't matter. Anyway, what we have is that note block is detected by an observer and that powers a dispenser on top and then an observer detects that dispenser and then the chain continues to the next dispenser with another observer underneath that and it chains all the way down to the bottom of the farm. Yay, another storm. <laughs> but that's the basics of how this works. And then at the bottom here, we just have a big funnel platform with some hoppers and campfires as the killing mechanism. Overall, for simplicity, this farm has it. It is extremely simple to make, although it is a little bit grindy. So, you know, keep that in mind if you do want to build this thing yourself. I think it took me about uh, two hours or so to build this, but overall, that's not bad, especially for the output that it has. I do highly recommend making it over an ocean and making an AFK platform way up in the air though, because that significantly increases the rates. But ladies and gentlemen, that is actually all I have time for for today. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see what you think about this dry docks. I think that it came out looking pretty cool but I'm always interested in hearing from you. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have a great day.